I don't know if anything happened. It just feels different. And I don't know in what way. I can't really remember. I can't put my finger on it. But something's different. But I could, I could talk about, I could tell you about um, when little things seem to happen, whatever they might have been. Um, I think, I think the first thing that, I, that really kind of shook things up was I was in a meeting with Roger Linden. Have you ever heard of Roger Linden? He's a, he's a lovely guy. He, he has these little meetings in, um, near, near Kentish town in his house, only, only small meetings, maybe five or six people. And I'd been going to those quite a lot. I just kind of liked him and it was something to do on a Tuesday night. And I remember him once saying, um, um, what you take to be you is it. And that really stuck with me. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know why it kind of sort of what you take to be, I didn't, there was something sort of there. And then one day I was there and we were, he was talking about space and the, the space in the room and the looking. And, and, and I'd been listening to Tim a little bit, I think, or talking to Tim about that. And suddenly there was this, just this recognition of the emptiness. There was this tingle that went up my spine. And it was this sort of like, oh, oh, that. But that's always been there. And it was this sort of like joy at this recognition of it's, it's just this empty kind of emptiness. <laughs> and I think ever since then, it's it, it sort of a, for a few days, I was sort of, it just, I just had this energy that felt different. And then it sort of really sort of disappeared. But then it sort of slowly came back somehow. And now I would say pretty much always, as soon as I think about it, the, the looking feels, feels really just empty, feels really blank. And now I'm thinking about it, the talking seems to be happening. There's this sort of blubber blubbering. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know what I'm saying. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like talking about the normalness of this. The, you know the ex, the ordinariness of of whatever is happening um i used to think it was so mystical and so unattainable and of course no one attains it but you know what i'm talking about um it's so extraordinarily ordinary yeah it's really ordinary i was chatting to somebody the other day about it and i think if you're a seeker it can be really confusing when you listen to all these different speakers and different messages because sometimes it's described in a really poetic, beautiful way, like maybe Nancy Nethercut describes it. And it just sounds so amazing and so awesome. And then sometimes it's talked about in a really bland, really completely ordinary way. It's just no different. to, to, to And... And depending who you listen to, you have these build up these ideas about it. And I found I can talk about it in both ways. I could say it's really just nothing. It's just nothing. It's a, you know, it's no big deal. But then the more you start to talk about it with somebody, the more sort of enlivened it becomes. And it starts to become sort of like, um, I don't know, just more, almost palpable. The nothingness just starts to feel Wow, presence the wrong word. It's just everything is sort of saturated in it, but it's not in it. So it's not saturated. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it so hard talking about this? Because I, 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 you know, what I'm trying to explain in this grab of all, you know, sometimes it comes out like poetic and sometimes it comes, comes out really confusing and conflicting and contradictory, but that's what it is too. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it's really obvious. And uh, it's nothing like uh, you hear this said all the time, nothing special about it. It's just that some, some people don't seem to notice it or, 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 or maybe their life doesn't lead in the way that they need to look to notice it. Their life's just trundling along, no problems. Often it's people who have had difficult lives or struggles seem to be looking for something else or maybe I mean, I think I've been doing this since child, my childhood, really. 
just looking for <laughs> I don't know uh, I've heard people talk about truth it's not really true just looking for there's no something. truth something. <laughs> yeah yeah there's no truth no there's no, no truth <laughs> there's nothing to find <laughs> no nothing to find or looking just, for an uh, authority there's no authority to this no <laughs> No, I was I was I was listening to this is this isn't sort of relevant really, but I was listening to a story that Sam Harris was telling the other day. I was listening to a podcast of his, and he was talking about oh, if I can recall this, it was about um, a story about a, a a bus full of tourists and they're traveling somewhere, and they stop off at a service station, and this Asian woman gets off amongst the crowd. She goes to the restroom. She gets changed, and the bus comes back and they all get back on the bus and someone reports a woman missing uh this this asian woman's missing and um everybody starts looking around for her and there's a bit of a panic they can't drive away until they find this woman they they go off searching for her and they ring the police you know and it's getting to like two o'clock in the morning and there's going to be a police helicopter out to search for her and then the asian woman who got changed realizes that they're all looking for her and um and so she tells the, you know, the driver, it's, it's me that everybody's looking for. And the search is sort of called off. Um, but it's not like the woman, was, the woman that was being looked for was found. It's just the search itself just dissolved, just dissipated. Um, so there was no sort of solution or sort of end to it. And somehow that struck me a little bit like seeking. Um, yeah. You know, sort of looking for something, looking for something, and then... And then there's this recognition that you're just not going to find anything. And then the search just dissolves. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's yeah. it. Yeah. The search, yeah. you know, there is this search that never really existed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is just what's happening. And then it's just this, this kind of like, who uses this word longing, the longing for something that cannot be attained, but who's longing it. And then when that, that, that longer <laughs> see them really bad at this is <laughs> yeah. not apparently there what is longing then yeah what is longing mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that longing what is that uh, when I I was there's something happened with my little boy recently I can't remember what it was, but it sort of brought this really mo emotional response from me. He wasn't there when this happened, but I remember crying. I just remember crying about it. There was this sort of sadness and this joy and this thought of me being a child as well and him. And it sort of, we sort of merged together in this sort of, the longing was sort of sad, but but also joyous. It's, it's just a strange thing. Maybe it's our, is that our humanness? What is that? I don't know what it is. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I find, what I find lately is the past, little while is tears come easily now mm -hmm. so i was i was raised as the first born son of five kids and with four boys so i had to be tough and you know my mom would take me to the dentist my uncle who's a dentist and then he would be pulling my teeth without anesthesia i'm just joking but i'm not supposed to shed a tear you know so i'm not supposed to show any fear wow. or i'll be eating the worst vegetable ever there's this a vegetable called bitter melon. It's really bitter. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to eat it and, and pretend that, that I love it so that the rest of my siblings would eat it. So they would use me as an example to, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I had to, I had to kind of like, you know, this character had to pretend that everything is okay when it's not, when it's bitter and I have to pretend that I love it. Mm. Um, and um, so it was hard for me to cry, you know, like, you know, I would cry at, at certain things or hide my, my crying. I would not cry in public, but mm. there's no more filter apparently 
So it just, the waterworks just kind of like happen. I'm like, oh, what's going on? It's mm -hmm. just tears happening. It's just, yeah. you know, just this swelling of emotions or whatever you might want to call it just comes out without yeah. any kind of um, restriction. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Or, or I laugh louder now. I laugh really, really loud. I would watch it some TikTok videos and I'll be like laughing so hard and as if I've gone mad. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, I feel I I feel the same way. I I noticed that after after that's weird to say after because it's not I like there know. was a point. There wasn't there wasn't a point where anything. There's no after, and after. There's no before. It's just. Mm. But um, cry, there was a lot of crying. Mm -hmm. it, it was almost like I was crying. I was. It was almost like I was wringing out a. Um, a flannel. Do you have flannels in America? You know that you wash yourself with. Yeah. I don't use a flannel actually yeah. to wash myself with, but you. It was like I was. It was being wrung out, mm -hmm. uh, and there were tears. I don't even really know what I was crying about. There were just tears that were coming out. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I would be walking down the street, um, you know, and and I'm like, I'm seeing fall for the first time, and I would cry, and I'm like, this is fall. <laughs> and <I> look, <laughs> I've never seen golden colors like that or different colors of the trees like that. Of course, you know, the character has, but I don't know. I can't explain it. It's just the newness and the freshness of seeing things for the first time and not really the first time. Does that make any yeah. sense? Or, yeah. or, or on a darker tone, I was, um, my aunt passed away. That's one of my favorite aunts, you know, that I considered just really, really a lovely, um, and we had a Zoom funeral because she passed away because we could not go because of COVID to her funeral. And I was surprised to hear myself sobbing and crying. I'm like, I've never done that, you know, in public anyway. You know, and, and it was just so um, guttural, something raw, you know, that's just happening. And, and the humanness, just, as you mentioned, humaning, humaning, is just happening. Yeah. 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 Thought I'd share that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's lovely. As you were talking, there were so many things, thoughts just popping up in my head. Um, they sort of pop up and then disappear. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what it is. I, <laughs> it just pops yeah. in and out. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was talking to Anne. I was like, I don't really have a memory anymore <laughs> sometimes. I know. When you were talking about the fall and seeing things for the first time, I remember... Um, uh, I remember when people used to talk about glimpses a lot and I was like, I've, no, I've never had any glimpses. It's not fair. You know, I want to have a glimpse and then I'll know, then I'll know. <laughs> yeah. um, but then after Oh, you're I, lucky. I, you're lucky you didn't have any of those glimpses because sometimes yeah. those glimpses becomes a something else, you know, like you want to extend a glimpse. And I, I've heard a lot of people talk about this, including myself. I had a glimpse and I'm like, I am going to put up, I'm going to open up a meditation center or something. You know what I'm saying? And then you get into trouble. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, or, the, or there might be a sort of um, a holding on to it. It's like, oh, I've got it now. And as soon as, as soon as there's that, I've got it. It's, you haven't got it. You can, you know. That's, that's what um, happened. I got it. I lost it. I got to have it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. a drug. Yeah. I was, um, so thinking back, I think maybe I had a few little, uh, I don't know if I call them glimpses. They were nice sort of moments, nice moments. <laughs> uh, there, there was one time I was lying in the park. I'd gone to the Dulwich Park and I was lying on a picnic blanket and I had my head really close to the grass. And I thought, I don't know, I was listening to some music and I took them out and I was looking at this piece of grass and I was kind of going, and then I was, there was this thought it was like, oh, the noticing is the noticed. It's like the noticing itself is the no And then there was this <laughs> sort of like amazing feeling. And sort of my peripheral, everything in the peripheral vision sort of, sort of became the, the whole, it was all the grass and the noticing. I only last for a moment, but it was really lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. One time I uh, lost my glasses. And I broke my glasses, so I had to put on contacts. And of course I put on contacts. I've not seen my face in a long time. And I was like, who is that? It was so weird just seeing a face, you know, like I'm like, oh. It's, yeah. it's almost like a, 
I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just um, I often run out of words because it doesn't come out properly. Yeah. Um, so, so in your seeking, Darren, um, did you did you do some heavy duty seeking, some desperate seeking? Yeah. I, well, I don't know desperate because it's really hard to talk in that way without knowing how someone else feels being inside their head. So. You know your your cal your cal your level of desperation. I don't know. I, I don't know how to compare it. But I did a lot. I did a lot. I read. The first thing I read was The Power of Now a long time ago, and then I thought. And then I finished it, and I thought, oh, I wonder how many enlightened people there are on the planet. And a list of ten came up, and I just looked through quickly, and um, I liked Muji's face, so I thought, oh, I'll 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 find him on YouTube. I, I knew nothing about non-duality. And then I listened to him talking for a couple of weeks and I thought, oh, maybe I'll go to India. Maybe I'll go to India for a trip and see what's going on there because everyone does that. And then, um, and then a few days later, I was cycling in Brockwell Park in Brixton with my boy and the park was empty. And I was cycling up the hill and I saw this man and a woman coming towards me. I thought, I recognize him. He looks familiar. And as he got closer, it was Muji. And I said, Muji? He said, yes. <laughs> I said, that's really wow. weird because, I, because I've been listening to you for the last couple of weeks on YouTube. He said, oh, um, I said, wow, it's nice to meet you. And, you know, we just had a little chat and uh, I got back on my bike and I was about to cycle off and I was cycling a bit. And the, I thought, oh, it'd be nice to get a selfie with him. I said, I'm not going to ask him for a selfie. That's just not cool. And then as I was cycling off, the woman with him shouted, would you like a photograph? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, go on then. <laughs> yeah. But then um, the whole idea of going to India just fell away. And I didn't listen to Muji anymore either. Uh, literally almost the next day. Um, and then I came across Tony. That was it then, really. Everything else sort of, you know, the whole the whole Muji thing and that just stopped and it was just it was just that constant barrage of there is no you you know and that that went on for a long time I was like reading it listening to everything every hour of the day podcasts YouTube books just voraciously you know eating up everything uh, trying to figure out, you know, what's consciousness, what's awareness, what's the witness, what's going on, you know. For a long time, there was this feeling of, you know, being here and then this sort of witness behind, right, right here, maybe. I don't know what I was thinking about that, because that just seems, <laughs> seems ridiculous now. Yeah. Like uh, God or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. It was like, um, it was like, a, yeah, no, it was like I was the witness, but, the, but, but, but the, what was witnessing was sort of just behind me. But now that just seems crazy because it's, now it just feels like it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, but that's not me. Yeah. That everywhere is it. it, it that's, that's right. Not, There's, um, it's impersonal. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Um, a lot of people talk about Tony Parsons or Jim Newman as their entry point to this thing. And, and I've spoken to so many speakers, maybe, maybe half of the nothing conference people, the speakers that, you know, maybe, maybe less than that, but probably half of that. I keep on hearing Tony Parsons, Tony Parsons, Tony Parsons, Tony Parsons. And, you know, as a, as a full disclosure, you know, when, when I was seeking to Tony was the last house on the on the block for me too it was one of those mm. I'm like oh because i've gone through all of the you know i've gone through everything that you can think of i used to sleep and listen to the sargadana maharaja's pointers from youtube yeah. you know and i just, just put it on and then i was like maybe this pointer would point at the unconscious me so when i wake up i'll be awake really awake <laughs> And I switched to Tony and Jim, you know, and I would, I would listen to Jim Newman's and I'm like, and I will get frustrated if I miss a word and I would rewind it. Maybe I'm like, maybe I missed a word. Yeah. That would, that would. Th that would just. That, yeah, would just yeah, yeah. That recognition. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Recognition. The recognition. The recognition. Yeah. 
<laughs> were you there too? Yeah. Were you doing that too? Oh yeah, all the time, writing things down, kind of thinking about them. And um, but Tony seemed to be seems to be the sort of hub that everything moves around. Yeah. But maybe that's maybe that's because his message was the most um, rad, not radical, but the most um, the rawest. He didn't veer from 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 it. Um, but but it became quite quickly that that it was just it felt like it was one voice. So whether it was Tony, Jim Newman, Kenneth Madden, uh, Lisa Cairns, Paul Hederman, you know, the whole, all of them. To me, it felt like one voice saying all of these different things. But Tony seemed to be the, initially the, the spark that set it off. Um, and he's lovely. He's such a lovely man. Yeah. He is. He is. It, it's, it's really fun talking to him. He calls me fella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. nice. And he always bugs me about my hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just wanted to. I just wanted to go back as well because you mentioned something about looking in the mirror a while back. Yeah, yeah. Um, earlier, and I remember getting up one morning and I was cleaning my teeth and I was kind of like, well, and I walked up to the mirror, and I was looking at the mirror, and then there was this body doing its teeth looking looking back but it was like it was looking back at nothing and then and ah uh, oh, it's just such a strange not a strange experience actually not strange not weird not sort of not tricky a little bit trippy but surreal i mean but not really it just felt like oh it's always been like that just never noticed yeah yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, or sometimes I was like lying down in bed and um, and I had these headphones on. These headphones are like noise cancelling headphones. So it's just breathing happening, heart beating. It's so weird, but so normal. Mm. Does that make any sense? It's just with no one breathing. It's so weird. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, I had a question that I completely <laughs> forgot. Oh. Sorry, I'm not throwing you with the mirror thing. No, 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 no. I'm horrible at this. Somebody asked me once, um, uh, why are you doing this? I'm like, I really don't know. I really don't know why I'm doing this. Um, mm. You know, if, you, if I, I stepped down from being a, a spiritual teacher before and had no, um, no motivation to be popular or anything like that, nothing, nothing at all. I, in the beginning of my interviews, when I started interviewing people, I used to cut myself, edit myself off completely so that no one would see me. Um, it's mm -hmm. because I just don't think it's necessary for an interviewer to be, um, since this is a conversation, that's why we're doing this. But later on, people, you know, ask me, um, it's the same thing, Emerson, if you edit yourself out or you, if you put yourself in. And then one of the person I'm interviewing said, I, I prefer the full version so that you see the flow of conversation. So it just doesn't feel like edited. Um, but it's just the same anyway. I love to see you. I, I, I love to see you in the interviews. I really like what you've been doing recently. Uh, I, I love your personality. I just think it's, uh, it's what seems to be working really well, whatever that means, whatever working really well means. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. I really, really enjoy it. But I saw the past 10 videos. I'm like, Hey, Darren, maybe you should interview Tim. I'm like, I just have this idea that maybe people are sick of seeing my face. It's always... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Not, not, not yet, anyway. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll start let, letting you know. Yes, let me know, please. <laughs> so what do you... It's your birthday, so how does it feel? Oh, how does an impersonal, like... an impersonal birthday feel? <laughs> yeah, it just feels like any other day which is interesting because really you know days i mean what are days without it's just this sort of ever hanging it's not even a moment it's this the, the other thing that was really noticed was that timeless that timelessness that there's no there's nowhere for it to go the, the what's happening now seems to fall into a story there's just no other side to it um it's just yeah that's still completely still 
unmoving emptiness that seems to be moving and busy and full of stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's so oh, just crazy. So my birthday, sorry, back to my birthday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'm going to, um, I was given a cake tin for Christmas with a gluten-free cake mix. And I thought, oh, I'll make that on my birthday. So I might make myself a cake, maybe. Nice. But that might happen, but it's not guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you're a part of many you're a part of exploding rainbows you you mm. help out tim sometimes yeah do you interview yeah. tim or do you do the hosting for the uh, the zoom meeting for tim i just did the the technical side of it i was at tim's when he was um getting his book together and he was struggling a little bit with the online aspect of it and julie was helping him out oh julie's great did, yeah, she's lovely. And yeah. I became the sort of intermediate. And then I realized that it was, you know, I could help him out with the Zooms, get a few technical problems at the beginning. So I just do that. I just let people in and kick them out if they're, if they're not um, welcome. I don't mean, you know, just regular people that turn up. But sometimes we get some gate crashes, you know, like, like we do on Zoom. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I just chase them around. It's like whack-a-mole. You need to find them and eject them but, um, <laughs> but i loved him ah yeah in yeah fact, i loved me, him too yeah for me that was really one of the spent be, chatting with tim after the after the tony meetings and sort of being able to just sort of because i'm quite shy generally generally and quite private and I, I i wouldn't really ask many questions in the meetings but tim was a was um I was able to sort of do that when we stood outside having a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and we just got on quite well. I love his sense of humor. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, I, I really liked that. I think he was one of my few, first few interviews too. And I asked him this, this questions that were, you know, um, I was, I had this interview, I was interviewed and I was asked all of these questions and it took me three hours, then took about an hour to answer all of the questions with so much more brevity and clarity and, 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 you know, and I was like, because I watched this video, I'm like, oh, he answered that so much better than I did. You know, I just rambled on for like about 20 minutes about something and, and, and then Tim just concisely summarized it in like, you know, the same thing, but in about two sentences what took me 20 minutes to explain <laughs> yeah i'm 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 i'm, a, I'm a, i love his talking it flows so lovely i i just i kind of think how do you do that how do you talk about it like that but he's i guess he's a speaker i mean he was a teacher maybe he has some maybe part there's something about his character as well that just is able to do that um, I find I can usually in conversation if it's conversational I don't think I could get up in front of people and just I don't think I'd have anything to say it's like <laughs> I, I remember uh, Tim saying to me that the moment you put your head up in the trenches you'll get shot the moment that you're on a pedestal you'll get torn down the moment that you were speaking about this, it's it's almost like a criticism. And and I now understand the reason that um, there's not a lot of personal life talked about, you know, in this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, yeah, yeah, because um, I'm, I'm getting my first, um, because I started showing up in this interview, so I'm getting my first messages. So Emerson, if you're not really there, you should kill yourself, that kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, wow, it's really nasty out there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really nasty, you know what I'm saying? But it's okay. Yeah. It's just what's happening or, too. Or, yeah, you should kill yourself or maybe I'll come and kill you. It's like, yeah, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Someone actually said that to me or, or, or just c calling this bullshit right away. And, and I'm like, oh, wow, it's really yeah. fascinating. That's what I thought too in the beginning, in the beginning. This is all bullshit. You know, all of this, um, um, uh, no concession, non-duality, a radical non-duality. Yeah. And I was out to get it, actually. I was, because I believe in the spirituality. I believe in the, um, you know, the, 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 the me character, believing in this meditation for a long, long time to attain something. But that fell flat. So I was going to like, you know what, let's try this, you know, um, no concession, 
non-duality. I didn't even know what it was. It just popped up somewhere. I think I was re re reading Richard Sylvester's book called I Hope He Dies Soon. Brilliant book. Have you read it? Mm, yeah, I have. Yeah, mm. it's great. And, like then, um, yeah. and then I said, Tony Parsons, saw the name Tony Parsons. And I researched it a bit. I'm like, so Tony Parsons has Andreas, Jim Newman, Lisa Lennon, Naho Wada, so many speakers that came from him. I'm like, this is a results-driven speaker. <laughs> because if you look at the other, you know, apparent, you know, speakers about this, you don't really have um, anyone. Only one person holds on to that title, the authority, you know, for example. I don't want to say names. I want to be respectful of teachers, and that's completely, you know. Um, if you have, for example, like, say, Ramana, um, or, you know, they, they only have a few and they don't really have, you know, but I want a live person that's speaking about this and not a dead person. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? You know, so in this, in the, I was a desperate seeker. So I was, so I wanted to get the best results <laughs> from being a, <laughs> the best results from this speaker. And I was looking at like, well, the proof is, you know, if Jim and Adrias and all of these various speakers speaking about it, Tony must be it. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, sometimes... And that's the, contradictory, the, contradictory, because I'm trying to say now that there's an authority, there's no authority. No. Sometimes the language that is used as well in those old, the older, well, the older books, they're just antiquated. And I just think this isn't a special, secret, old, ancient message. It's just... It's just what's happening for everyone. And it's just, I think, point, the way it's pointed out, I, I, you know, I'd rather hear it, it pointed out in a, in, a, in a way that's sort of relevant to, to who I am and my contemporary life, you know. And a lot of that, a lot of that older stuff, or even, um, even sometimes Eastern stuff is a little bit confusing, I think. Um, and, and misunderstood, and and what you were saying earlier as well about people saying about um, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around, but people saying if there's no me, then why don't you kill yourself? That's that's often really misunderstood as well. That if there's no me, that that the idea that a me would mean if there's no me, it would mean that something would change. The me aspect of it is really misunderstood because it's such a subtle thing. It's just the claiming. It's just the, just that little that changes. Is yeah. it not even that? It because it's it can't not be even that. <laughs> yeah. It's not even that. It's it's so yeah. um, or trying to capture a, a yeah. photograph. The moment they could capture it, that's not already it. That's yeah. what we're trying to I, do here. I heard Nancy say the other day. It's sort of it's known in the unknowing. It's like in in the unknowing. Here it is known in the unknowing so it's sort of there's an intuited obviousness but it's it's just not there it, you could say it's it's you know it's not real you could say it's imagined it's like a fantasy but it's not like a fantasy because it doesn't feel like a fantasy it feels it's unrealness feels real yeah um, I love That's, reading Nancy. Uh, Nancy um, had a book of poetry, beautiful poetry. I love, love uh, the, Nancy's poetry. And I love Michael Markham when he speaks about it too. Yeah. I love it yeah, when he Michael tilts his Mike. tilts his head back in this dreamy thing and just like, a, yeah. and I just kind of like, you know, and I just, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like embraced by this beautiful, you know, um, um, yeah, Michael should speak more about this. Yeah. He should. I really liked, what I liked about Rainbows was the, for me, for me was this opening to the love aspect of the, of, of the me. And also that the character, that the appearance of the character and the, 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 the dream aspect of it, what was appearing was sort of became more, more beautiful it was like oh the uniqueness of everybody it was oh and tim said something as well the other day it was like the it's not like a transcendence it's like a descent 
it's like a descent into the into the me that you're tr- that you were initially you were trying to lose. Yeah, and then it's I like it, that it's sort of it sort of it sort of becomes more beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For 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 me, it's it's kind of like um, a humbling, mm. and then yeah. a humbling, or, or I don't even know what I'm talking about. But you know, you know, it's 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 yeah. it's it's almost kind of like a growing up. Mm. from that imaginary, you know, um, spoiled brat, you know, you can like, ah, oh. mm. it's a, or, or, or it's kind of like carrying a, a heavy backpack with rocks you're carrying for a long time. And then that disappears. And you're like, Oh, I had a backpack before. Yeah. That was never there. No, the other thing is as well, there's no certainty. So no. I, I, I don't have any certainty about it. Even to the point of, if I hear somebody a speaker say something that I don't understand, there's still doubt can can appear of oh maybe maybe there's something else that I need to recognize, but it's just that this is expressed in so many different ways. Oh by yeah, different people. I love um, that too. I, you know, mm. Mm. I love I love the many expressions of the infinite. It's just the different expressions, kind of like you know, with yeah. this. So awesome, so mm. awesome. It's just a. Uh, Gratitude, you know, there's just a lot of gratitude talking to you, talking to so many people about mm. this. And and I can't believe that I've done probably about 70 or 60 interviews. I don't even know. Wow. Have you interviewed Antonia? Antonia Lovejoy. She's no. On, on I should I message her. I should message her. Mm. Yeah, I should message yeah. her. I called her out of the blue. I liked what she was posting on rainbows. And now and again, if I really like what someone's posting, I'll message them and say, okay, can we have a chat? You know, oh, cause I, cause I, I should just message her. How, yeah. How it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll post this and I'll just, I'll just call it nothing conversations. Okay. Yeah. So it's not an interview because people are kind of like a little bit like, Oh, I don't want to be interviewed because it's, mm. you know, Yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much. We should uh, do this again. I'm going. I'm going to pause this, but we'll we'll keep on talking.